What's up, family? You're tuning in to Real Ass Real Radio 104.1, your nightcap of comedy. My name is Ken Miller in the big chair tonight. Don't, don't, don't be surprised. I know you don't hear James John. I know as soon as y'all don't hear James, like, oh my god, well, yeah, James and, uh, and Michelle, they are hard we hard nights. Uh, probably having sex at the Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I'm not going to. Who are you going to call, Michelle? Who are you going to call, Michelle? Who crossed the streams? <laughs> yeah. You already know. You got ectoplasm you know all over my baby. Damn, uh, bro, they do not care. But shout out to Michelle and, and Jay's out, out there, man. But we'll, I get to, to, I was out there myself too, but we'll get to that later. But join the virtual studio with my comedy brothers. We're going to start it out with the dude to help get this thing started, Mr. Miguel Colon Jr. And as um, Jane says, we call him Jr. because he knows his father. What's up, my friend? What's up, man? I'm good. You know, you know that James right now got her. Got her bent over. She dressed like like she dressed like Janine, the receptionist. He's the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, and then they're just getting pepper sprayed by Universal Security. And he's like, "That ain't gonna stop us." He got his mouth open. He's like, "Ah, I'll take it." Ah. <laughs> you guys don't know if you've listened to the show for years, and if you've listened to the show for years, do me a solid. If you go on social media, chime in with the weirdest James Yawn moments you've had because. I'm going to tell you guys, and Chris, you might not know this. James Yawn, and I tell this story, but we've had, like, OnlyFans models come in, and we've had some OnlyFans girls come in, and James is, like, freaked about it. He's like, I just, I don't really want to talk about this with them. I don't really get into talking sexual. I don't want, but we're like, no, 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 it's cool. We're talking about the industry and stuff. He's like, okay, cool. And he'll be kind of, like, prudish on it and stuff. And then all of a sudden, we'll just be having an episode. He's like, one time I was eating Michelle's butt in front of like nine what? Marines. <laughs> and you're like, what? Yeah. Like, yeah, it, was a, it was a Toys for Tot drive. And I was just like, what? <laughs> <watching on it." laughs> Bro, like, we'll be like, wait, wait, what? Hey, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait After a minute. Years, you did it all. Come on. He literally on one episode. I would never share these kind of stories about us if we were all talking about it in cars. Like if this was our conversation in a car, I'd never throw it out. Cause man, I get it. We're gonna talk one way around our people, and we're gonna talk another way around our fourteen listeners. But, <laughs> but literally one episode, he's like, sometimes at parties back in the day, me and Michelle would just start doing it in front of people. I said, what the hell, man? You can't take a girl out to lunch if she works for you. But you and Michelle could just be like, gather around. We're gonna have some, we're gonna have some eyes wide shut. No, I want you to see. Wake the children. <laughs> Wake the children. Uh, oh, after so, after hey, I'm telling you, man, the, 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 the yawn boys have seen more than we know. Them boys yeah, in the house oh, like, hey, hey the and that's why they in. all that's why they all moved out of state. They yeah. like yeah, man, I, they're the only kids who moved out before they turned 18. Yeah. <laughs> they were they they, they got Jeff Jeff got them all. What is it? Uh emancipated. emancipated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're like soon they got their license they, they was out. Changed their last names. Yeah. They were scored around. That is hilarious, man. That yeah. other voice you hear, man, out in California getting his um his his 5K. What you got? Marathon, I getting ran, his marathon I ran a on. 10K and a half marathon, so about 19 miles. 19 nice. miles. This is Jeff Batman Kaufman from the law office of Kaufman and Lynn and the Batman. Under Oath Podcast. So Jeff out there at Disneyland got to get his 19 miles on. Um, had a good time running, but he also had some bad stuff happen to him this weekend. Um, his his team Notre Dame lost to uh Man, they ain't no Jews <laughs> voting for Notre Dame. Who are you kidding? I'm about to say <laughs> Notre Dame, Notre Man, Dame. Don't you see all the movies? It's always that one Jewish kid they bring on to play football and they treat him like crap and then he winds up. Um, I'm just Come the on. second string receiver. I can't make any plays. <laughs> like Mordecai, it's your turn. <laughs> oh no. In real life, <laughs> in real life, you see him. He was like, Yeah, I was six four. You know, I had like this. Yeah, like, yeah, oh. yeah, the real story. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, we were talking about it before we came on, man. How Notre Dame lost um, to, they, to what is it, Northern they, Illinois? They Northern, got paid they, like good they, money. Yeah, here's the they, problem. All these teams. So. What happens is when you want to win a homecoming game or you want to win these out of conference games, you get what they call you know a bunch of duds. And everyone knows who the duds are. They get paid very rarely. Do they play home games? They get paid like I think like twenty million to play teams all over the country and get their ass handed to them. Now to lose for Notre Dame to lose this game at number five, Northern Illinois has never beaten a top ten top ten team in history. Notre so. Dame lost to the Washington Generals. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that is crazy, man. Yeah, I, I actually watched that game because uh, it is it's foot it is football season, man. But we'll get to that, man. But we do have a guest on um, kicking it with us is my comedy brother, man. He has a new night. 
now in Orlando. It is a karaoke night every Tuesday, 8586 Palm Parkway, Orlando, Florida. Karaoke night uh, with Chris Alexander. Chris, what's up, man? How you, how you guys doing? How you guys? Hi. Uh, yeah, V Pizzas slash the cat room, open bar. Not well, I can't say open bar, but you know, it, they, it, they got a license, so it's gonna have all the drinks. The there. bar is open, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's not an open bar, the, vo- the bar is available. So, yeah. I, I look at yeah. the picture of Chris as the DJ, he's got these true turntables, but he's really working it all off an iPhone. Yeah, I love this. no, 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 no. <laughs> Android, Android. <laughs> Chris, no first of all, Chris, good energy. We always have to coach Chris before he comes on. Yeah. Because Chris, before before the break, Chris will be cracking us up, talking wild, <laughs> have us dying. And then the show will come over like, Chris, you got a karaoke night? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Chris basically talks like Kaufman briefed him, don't say nothing to the police. <laughs> like, hey, were you there, were, were you there when, uh, was, when little Sean got raised, shot? Man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about it, man. Give us some how it's going. What's up oh, with it? So we had our okay, first Chris thought he was done, bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was going into it. No, so like we had the first show, uh, the first night last Tuesday. We're gonna have the second one uh, this coming Tuesday, which will be what air t- tonight. No, no, it'll be t- tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, so yeah, the first night went really well. It's you know, like usually. Like usually every other karaoke night, you know, like everybody was shy at first. Nobody wants to get on. Um, then we had um, this little, like little seven, eight year old girl. She came up. She wanted to do Twinkle Twinkle, and she went. She sang Twinkle Twinkle, and everybody was like, "Oh no, we can't, we can't get out done by eight year old." So everybody started filling up, started singing their songs, having fun. Liquor was flying. It was. Great night. Good food, great, good hey, drinks. Man, everything. time out, bro. Who brought the eight year old to this man, bar? Let so we address I, this. No, it's is it is it, it, a is a V pizza restaurant. It's like an authentic Italian restaurant pizza joint. Oh, and... so she was working in the back. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was part of staff. So, no. Yeah. But no, it was it was good. It was good. Chris, was so. she black or white? Or oh, Spanish man. or ta- okay, white. Because this is what I was thinking, and I'm gonna say this, guys. When in my head I wasn't sure if she was black, and you said she was singing like "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star." Yeah, I know black people always have their version of a song. Like white people would be like "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star." Black people like "Twinkle Twink, Twinkle Twink," and I'm like, <laughs> it's always like extended. So yeah. I was wondering. So it, you started out with "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star." Audience, are you listening? This is the party yeah. to be at. Uh, they got eight year olds. It's like a ditty party. There's little kids oh, singing. Yeah, yeah. You know, we still, we, we're playing everything. So, uh, let's see. I did a couple of songs. What you doing? What, you, what do you sing, Chris? What's Chris Alexander sing at karaoke? That'd be Saluta. Luther, right? Oh, no, nah, no. Nah. I, I do. No, nah, mine's a surprise. Mine's a surprise. Everybody from uh, what's next, Churchill, when we had our ice cream socials, I used to have that one song I go to on the ship. So, I usually do that song at, at the I did that last week and. That kind of like loosened everybody up. Like, oh, okay, okay, and it's all good. So I can't really say that much because it's, it's like kind of a surprise type of ordeal. But it it's it a raining man. Yeah, hallelujah, no. it's no. raining man. And yeah, then the whole crew on the ship was like, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. hey. And then the Marines were just upstairs in the ship crying like I told you. <laughs> I told no, you this mine, was going to happen. It's a, it's a secret surprise. It's a secret. Um, Talent that I have. Can do you really karaoke? Care. You ever karaoke, Ken? Yeah, back in the day, me and the box of chocolates would karaoke after every show. We you, preacher will preacher will find a karaoke bar, and it's gonna be some R and B. We gonna sing, yeah. and we can't sing. I'm yeah, a, I can't I'm, sing. I'm gonna hit him with the Johnny Gill, my my my. Like I'm doing my my. So that was your song. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, nah, it's just whatever I'm drunk with. First number oh. two, Chris, stop eating the mic. I'm not eating the mic. Yeah, yeah, you like this. He he looks like he got a nice mic too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, or or a preacher who make us do because you know I hate Brian McKnight. So he make me do (laughs) Brian McKnight. I love your hatred for Brian McKnight. Like he stole your girl in 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 eighty seven. I don't like that dude, bro. But if I had to do a (laughs) duet with me and my wife, I would probably see if we would do Fire and Desire. Rick James and Tina Marie. Oh. That'll probably be our, our that we'll have fun with that. I think that would be because karaoke, you gotta sing something fun. It gotta be yeah. fun. Yeah, exactly. yeah, you can't be fun. And Chris, there's sing. always that person who comes to karaoke who wants it too bad because they never made it as a singer. 
There's people who come to karaoke like, hey, I'm a wild out on there. Listen to me sing. No, no. Oh, I'm killing it. Like me and Jeff Kaufman, we're doing everybody was kung fu fighting. We're laughing because our voices are bad. And then there's that one woman who comes up and she's like, this is it. I'll show my father. I'll show him right now. <laughs> hey, um, so I don't know if you know this, Chris. You know the Catch a Rising Star at Universal? Uh, I heard of it. Yeah. So you know they used to be a bonkers. Oh, we're, okay. It used to be a bonker. So me and my wife went Friday night. We spent her, her birthday at Universal in Disney. And, and you said it, Miguel, a simple song. This dude got yeah. on stage and sang tequila. That's the that's what Mike uh, Mike said. Oh, one word. To do that. The, that's talking. it. Just the one that, word. Tequila. It, yeah. It, it, tequila. And, and that, it I mean, killed. One, and it killed. And, it, and, 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 it went wild. Killed. and it, he was dancing. And so this is the thing about Catch a Rising Star, Jeff. I thought when it first or when it took over for Bonkers, I thought it was going to be like you. They're trying to find talent. No, it's just no. karaoke. Mm. Yeah. Because that was my first time there. There's money since in that, they closed man. It as There's bonkers. money in that. Don't think you're wrong. You drinks and money and people yeah. like to make themselves look like idiots and they need to buy more drinks. Man, Yo, come look on. here, man. Me and me and my wife had two drinks. It was thirty two dollars. <laughs> It's free to get yeah. in, though. <laughs> That's how they what get you. Song, Miguel? Yeah, Miguel, what's your uh, so go-to? It, yeah. your go-to? Hey, I got, like, Turn the Page by Bob Seger, but I do the Metallica version because it's about being on the road. That's like if I want if – if I'm feeling myself and I want and I want a vibe and stuff like that. Uh, but it's Eddie Murphy, my girl, wants to party all the time. That's, that's, my, that's my karaoke jam. My girl wants – and I did it the last time with the Sausage Castle karaoke – in the red leather uh i got it on yeah i got the whole red leather out and uh yeah i was uh i was feeling it because i mean about karaoke you got the chest out. <laughs> oh, the, oh yo yo the mississippi meatloaf was out bro because with me <laughs> karaoke bro it's about you saying it doesn't matter if i'm good i'm participating exactly. yeah you're not getting a record deal out of it, so just yeah. have fun. But there's, there's always that one getting girl. a record deal out of it. Hey, it's man, Miguel, you are not lying, man. Jeff, we'll get your song next, but Jeff, no lie. It was this one girl, she got on stage, she's dressed nice, she got a little thing, they got a little some side boob coming out. Everybody, her friends are screaming for her, bro. And I was like, me and my wife were like, we thought she was about to kill it up there. Man, we talking <laughs> no. about dud, bro. <laughs> she, she Jeff, murdered I'm talking it, about, but, but it ain't hey, killing. It's a hey, homicide. <laughs> hey, hey, if y'all can see, that's me at my karaoke. Bro. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> great. Just beating it. <laughs> you Jeff, what's yours? Man, man, what's I go, going? I go old school. I go, I go Eagles. I go Bob Seger. You know, you can't screw yeah. those up because anybody yeah. can sing those songs. So you're in business. You know, and I don't Jeff, have to worry about. Do you feel too? It's about you enjoying yourself up there, not as much about the audience enjoying. It's the opposite yeah. of comedy. I guess that's what open mic comics yeah. are thinking. It's about me having a good time and not the audience. You oh, know? I want people to join in too. Yeah, I, please yeah. join in because you can't hear me. We're good. Yeah, yeah. You want one like like it was one black dude of the whole night, and he's saying Tyrone. So of course me and Carl? my wife got me and my wife got, and you can't cuss. And of course he said the cuss word, and they cut his mic. He's like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then they let him keep going, but he got up then again. Nobody, none of them could sing, but they yeah. were up to have. But the tequila guy, let me tell you something, bro. That killed. They were doing a little Pee Wee Herman. Yeah. <laughs> everybody, that's tequila bro. in everybody's mind. Yo, the Pee Wee Herman dance. Hey, uh, hey, yeah. he was he was having a good time, man. So before we go to the commercial break, guys, don't forget, man. Make sure you check out Chris Alexander. Uh, let me get your flyer up. Every Tuesday, seven p.m. at the what is it called, Chris? The V Pizza, V Pizza slash Tap Room. V pieces slash tap room 8586 Palm Parkway, Orlando, Florida. It is for all ages. So make sure yes. you go check it out, man. But we got to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. Real Labs, Real Radio 104.1. We're back. Real Labs, Real Radio 104.1. Your night capital comedy. I am Ken Miller in the big chair tonight. Guys, do us a favor. Go out to social media and follow us on every platform by searching Real Labs. Also, go to YouTube, subscribe to our page. Our videos are up. And if you missed any of these shows, you can go out to any platform, search uh, Real Labs, and you can listen to us in podcast format, especially out on, on the iHeart app, man. We're out there like big time, man. Um, Had a great weekend, man. Miguel, I saw you guys had a great weekend as well. It was my wife's birthday uh, Friday night. My partner got us a room at the Hard Rock, so we stayed at the Hard Rock. We hit up City Walk. I haven't, done, been, I haven't okay. been to City Walk in fi maybe 15 years. 
Like seriously, I I feel like it's been like a long time since I've been to City Walk. I I seriously, man, yeah. I've been to City Walk in a minute. And and then after that, man, Saturday we went to um um Animal Kingdom. She wanted to ride the um Avatar ride, which by the way, you know I don't do any type of rides like that. Bro, I was in that <laughs> I'm a punk, bro. <laughs> you ain't even is it the motorcycle or the, or the yeah. River? When the thing be man, bro, I don't yeah. like stuff like that, Jeff. I, I I just can't mess with it. So we did that, and then uh, we went, we drove around town and got like all her free birthday stuff, and, and we hey, came home and we and we chilled, man. But I I gotta tell y'all this story, man, because the real labs crew and the, and the people out there, y'all know my father. Y'all know the the war hero chick man. McAdoo. Y'all know him. <laughs> So, so the day of my wife's birthday is also the five year passing of my father, and I have a beer for my father. And I was watching TV, and I had a couple of couple of drinks. Miguel had a shot, of, and I was and I was balling. Yeah. I was balling, bro. Hey man, look at dude. I don't cry, bro. And I don't know what it is, and y'all can help me figure this out. Y'all know my father wasn't around when I was a kid, right? right. Why is it as men, especially in our community, Chris, mm -hmm. that we still mourn for our fathers and even though they were not there for us? Approval. You don't have anybody to approve your life. And that's what your dad's job is. He, he approves what you're doing. You look up to him and say, hey, am I doing everything I'm supposed to be doing? I want you to be proud of me. You know, for some reason, we fight for that. I mean, my dad, my dad was tough on me. I mean, he, he he baited me too. He got me really bad one time. I can see that. He, I can see that. He goes, "This is this is the worst one." We were having dinner, and he he goes, "Jeff, you know, I'm sorry. I, I've been tough on you." He goes, "You know, do you have anything that's been bothering you?" I I go, "Yeah, Dad. You know, no matter how much I succeed, you always tell me I'm screwing up, man. That's not easy." And he looked over at me, he goes, "This pie's baked. I ain't changing." I was like, man. <laughs> <laughs> "He said that's why I was hard on you because you're still soft." <laughs> <laughs> that's that's hilarious though you know jeff I, I i say that though man i i think there's a lot to what you're saying because something that matters to me now it, it's big to me now is that sometimes my father comes to me to talk or like seek counsel on something and to me it it lights me up that my old man is coming to me to ask something it's because you know at this point he knows he this is what it is my old man knows that I might not be the smartest cat that he's ever met, but he knows I've proven that I love him and my decision-making will be thinking towards him. But every now and then the old man hits me up with something. Let me ask you something. What do you think about this? And and Jeff, it, it still lights me up like I'm a little kid because I'm like, this is the dude yelling at me for you holding the flashlight right, wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, now he, right. and now he- I mean, my dad he, came to me yeah. with legal advice and he yeah. was like, could you set this up for me? And I actually saved his house one time and he didn't need the money, but- you know, he was like, you save it. When, yeah. When they, yeah. He was like, because you wrote that one sentence in, it saved me everything. And yeah. I was, I was like, well, thanks, Dad, man. And then he said, but this is where you're screwing up. So I was, like, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> right. you know what, your dad you was like, I got father let, thing in there. Yeah, I can't let the yeah. boy think. Because you know what, your father's like, he's like, he's like a drill sergeant, drill instructor. If I let him know he's doing good, he's gonna relax. I gotta <laughs> keep him thinking. You know he could hey, do better. Now, let me ask you: Your father, your father was was he eighty second or one hundred and first Airborne? What was your father? One hundred and first. He's one hundred and first. Yeah. And I remember mm. you always telling me the story, mm. Je Jeff. Not today. Tomorrow you make fun of me. Mm. So helicopter. Which, which, by the way, just found out because I always thought he was eighty second because I thought Airborne Infantry was There's all a big difference, man. There's a big difference. Yeah. One well, comes out of the helicopter, the other one jumps out of airplanes. Okay, yeah. then he was 82nd in. He jumped yeah. out of planes. Air assault. Well, but you told me the seconds. story. Yeah. You told me the story that you came to him uh when you were younger and you were you were you were proud to let him know that you have enlisted in the army. And his question to you was, Did you go airborne? Yeah. And you said <laughs> no. And then he was just like this, mother. You know? <laughs> but I bet at that moment, honest to God, that was a hard moment to take. And now oh. It's a great story that you yeah, just laugh yeah, about. Yeah, dude, it was so funny because I'm like, he said, "Well, what are you gonna do?" I said, "I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be a computer programmer." Computers? Who does that? Like, 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 I, he goes, you, you joined the army to do that? Yeah, he called me the F word. What? What <laughs> does that? <laughs> I was like, what? I said, like, I said, computers are the future. In his mind, no, no, jumping out of planes and getting shot at and shooting at people. 
That's so, the so military. Let me, let me say that I'm on Team McAdoo. Is that what you're telling me right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, the best part is Ken had Junior when when your when your father was alive. Had Junior been like, hey, hey, Grand Pops, I I listed in the army. What you gonna do? Water purification. That's my boy. Yeah, yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> hey, hey, nothing wrong with that. Nothing yeah. wrong. With that. Yeah. Hey, we gotta right. have water because we gotta have water. Do it right. But, 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 that, yeah. It, it's funny, Chris. I get to you next because Chris had four dads. Yeah, so I get to them say that, <laughs> but it's it's hilarious that when it comes to the military, people who are not military don't know that there's other jobs in the military besides yeah. war. Oh, yeah, when I told well, them I worked in the White the House, they was like, How yeah. is that possible? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, What they, they think we just go to war, that's all. They don't know yeah. that there's lawyers, there's trash men, there's yeah. people that work at the gym. They don't know any of this. They honestly think that we're all Rambo. And then, Ken, they don't understand, like, secondary MOSs. It's like, what do you mean? Use infantry. Why are you working? This This is what I'm doing now. I'm over here. Yeah. They got me at at a school. I'm an instructor at a school. What are you teaching? (laughs) Hygiene. (laughs) Uh, They told me it was either be a recruiter. Become a go to be drill instructor or take one of these secondary MOS. So oh. now I'm in Utah at a joint base teaching hygiene yeah. to Somalia. Now, now, Ken, now, Ken, you had some people in basic when they showed up and you looked at them, where is this dude from? There were some dude. weird ass people sometimes that didn't know how to shower, didn't know how to bathe. <laughs> weird things. I had a, a Jeff, I had a guy in my platoon who was 19 years old and he was an alcoholic at 19. Damn. And he was going yeah. through withdrawals and he would drink mouthwash. Like he would literally drink mouthwash. Yeah. And I'm like, we had a we had a guy from the Midwest, bed, he was a bedwetter, 19 years old. Like it, Man, it, that ain't it, the place it, to wet your we, we had a thief. <laughs> we had a thief who was ripping us off, ripping, stealing from everybody. And they Bro. found who the guy was. And let's just say this, it didn't work out in his favor. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you gotta lock that wall locker, baby. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wall locker, bro. You imagine the kid, he's an alcoholic, he's 19 years old, he's he's just pounding mouthwash, and everybody's like, Man, this kid's an alcoholic, he's drinking mouthwash to get high, to get drunk. And the drill instructor's like, You mean he don't quit? I like that <laughs> attitude. <laughs> My man but, finds a way. <laughs> yeah, but hey, man, it's the, the the keep gets down the subject. I I know I've known Chris for five, four or five years now. We've sat on my porch. We, me and Chris have actually had these father talks, these, yeah. these parenting talks as two black men. Am and I considered Chris, the I, fifth dad since I buy your hot dogs? Yeah, pretty. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And y'all also buy me alcohol. I'm the only, I'm the only dad to watch a meal, man. Come on. <laughs> Terrible father, bro. <laughs> oh, damn. I love is good, man. <laughs> <laughs> but me and Chris have had these talks, Miguel, and, and Chris has had, we, we joke about the four dads. His joke is he has four dads and four kids, the same amount of dads who walked out of his life. But Chris, or, or were you ever that kid that needed that, that from that reassurance from any one of the guys that you consider dad or stepdad? Yeah, because, I mean, you're always looking for, like, that approval you know what i mean you always look like like am i doing the right job like am i doing am i doing am i good enough type, type of ordeal so every time like i went into um i don't know like big brother father figure like see somebody where i in that position where i want to be i always try to like kind of match up to them you know what i mean yeah. so I, it, it's always that type of vibe chris i'll tell you this much man i you know i think all of us searched out father figures no matter how our relationships were with our fathers because there's always other father figures there's that cooler older dude and you know and all the all these things and that's the danger of of not being a good father figure to your kid because a boy and i can't speak for daughter yeah someone else will fill that father figure position and sometimes Mm. you get lucky in life and they're just good other men that fill that father figure position but most of the time what I've found, especially when it comes to a younger person filling the father figure position is you might be a young kid, you you 12, 13 years old, and there's some like 17, 18 year old older kid that you hang out with and you're looking up to him at that big brother father position. And this dude for the first time has is having that responsibility and doesn't know what they're doing. And they're trying to give you advice coming from their heart, but it's 18, 19 yeah, year old yeah, man yeah, advice. Yeah. Or, so or you need, time, you need, yeah. Or at most part, they don't want that position. They just yeah. trying to just do their job. And it's he's like, t- he, yeah, he's sitting there just smoking a hip. He's like, 
Yeah, man. Yeah, you you you, you can f both them girls. They'll never find out. I don't care if one of them loves you. You do it, baby. You're doing it. You know. Like, why are you coming to me with your problems? Like, hey, hey, well, but Mr. No, Johnson, no, but yeah, one of them, yeah. Is, one of them is, hey, one of them is your daughter. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? The fine one. The first one. one? <laughs> first one? I mean, Miguel Johnny, Johnny. 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 Marine for a dad. <laughs> Man, come on. Yeah. 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 It's funny because when like when Jeff said, like, you want to live up to expectations. But the crazy thing when I when when people say that, I was I was a great kid. I was an right. athlete. I made good grades. I did get in that much trouble. Like, I like, I'm like, you know, it's like I can see if I was out there being a the badass, but I wasn't. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I'm like, I'm trying to get this dude to be like, you doing good when everybody else is telling me I'm doing good. Yeah. That's you the thing that hurts. Well, Ken, they were it's like that, 13 of you, one, weren't they? It's there? like that North Star type What's of thing up? trying to go through that presence. They were like 13 of you kids, right? Yeah, but we all got different fathers. Yeah, but you all lived in the same house. No. It don't matter. No. Well, how many how many Max how many Max were in the house with you at the time? Just uh, none. I'm the only his I'm his only child. No, no. When you lived with your mom, how many people lived in the house? Um, at the most, at the most six. All, all right. my other, when my mother died, all my brothers and stuff were older. So they either went to live with their fathers or grandma, or they went to live on their own. Ruthie raised her kids and me and my brother, Aaron. So, Did you ever yeah. get so, jealous of any of the other kids' fathers? Oh, Terrell, yes. Because Terrell, <laughs> my brother he Dwayne. Gave it, he gave he knew exactly. Hey, <laughs> Dwayne, yeah. Terrell knows this. <laughs> because Terrell's and my mom, Terrell and Ruthie May, that's her real son. She yeah. was she was with him, you know what I'm saying? Like they were together, lived together, dated and everything. So they got to see their fathers. Ruthie did yeah. not want me and my brother Aaron to see our dads because she adopted us. And her thing is, I'm their daddy now. Yeah. You didn't want them. You didn't want them now. All of a sudden, you want something to do with them. Yeah. And they weren't they weren't paying no child support. She ain't getting nothing from them. She ain't want nothing from them. So yeah. So now they got to see their daddies. I ain't get to see, I had to sneak to see mine, and he still didn't even want to see me really. Hop so. in that truck with all them coins. <laughs> 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 Let me God, you had to kidnap your own child. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, well, last night, last night was store? rough. Right. Hey, hey, man. Last night it was it was rough for me, man. I said, I gotta talk about this one on the radio because I was what wild. triggered it. What was there a moment that triggered it? Man, I was just I was watching Miss Pat. I was, I was watching out, and Miss Pat took me out too. I was we were just watching TV and we got done watching the new Kevin Hart show. It's by the way, so good. And we were just sitting there, and the beer is sitting in front of me that I play have for my dad. Yeah. And I was like, yo, my father dead, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and I just I said, I'm going to lay down. I went to lay down. I'm in the room crying. I come back out. Sean is still in the living room. I listen on her lap. And I was just like, yo, like. How come God. you don't want me? Yo, <laughs> for real. <laughs> I, 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 I was just like, yo, like, I was like, yo, all my parents really gone, bro. And I'm 47. You know right. what I mean? Still like, young. like bro, still young. I, I'm yeah. young. Oh. And I'm like, dog. I was like, Lord, take me to the king, bro. I, I was on one last night, Dang. bro. And woke up this morning and went to work. And with that being said, we got to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. Real last, real radio 104.1. Real last, real radio 104.1. Your night cap of comedy. I have a kid Miller in the big chair tonight. Make, make sure you got the social media. Phone. The reason we're laughing is we got Chris Alexander on. And Chris got four kids and they're in the back making noise. So he just told them to shut the F up. Uh, before it was... I be I think all of us froze for just a minute and heard our fathers. <laughs> like yeah. I stood up talking about our fathers. <laughs> How do we just talk about our father? Chris, shut your ass up. Hey, you know the first thing your kids do too when when you all get yelled at that, you look at one sibling. He talk about you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you talking to you? Do a lot of pointing. That's what's going yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> You messed Bruh, up. Oh, you Spider Man thing when they point at each other. Oh my goodness. Chris, Chris, hey, Chris told this kid, shut their ass up, and we all yeah. got quiet. Yeah, yeah, I got tensed up. I, I went like, to damn mode. Oh my goodness. Hey, man, make sure you guys go out to social media and follow us real last uh, on every platform. And make sure you message us. We be getting messages for people who listen to the show. I know we joke a lot, but we do appreciate you guys that do listen. Um, we had we did a comedy competition last week. Uh, Miguel lost his round, 
And, oh my um, god, <laughs> yo, yo, I told I told the audience, no lie, I told the audience, I was like, I don't I don't understand you guys. I was like, do you know what you're getting right now? Like I told him, I was like, I'm I, I, and then when I walked off stage, I came back and I go, I don't like any of you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> But shout out to the young lady that owns the record store. She is a um, uh, real last listener, and we're planning on getting her on. And that record store is super dope. It is really dope. Oh, it's, my it's God, dope. super dope. They sell vinyl? Beach yes. Side Retro. Yeah, they okay. sell vinyl. They, yeah, have, they have vinyl, games, everything. Clothing. It's on Satellite Beach. It's worth If, you, if you're listening, you've never been to Beach Side Retro, go check it out. Go see the owners. Let them oh, know yeah. that you heard about it on Real Last, and then let them know that, that Miguel said he'll come back there, but... Never to in front of that audience again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris, I I left. I actually did my. I thought I was gonna lose. I told you about it, Chris. I Jeff. I oh. thought I was gonna lose my round. Oh, this, the the, the turmeric. Jeff, you didn't wait to said, find out. No, I want my round. Then I left and went to the bar. I didn't want to watch the rest of the show. Jeff, this lady said she got a friend with cancer and his name is Rick and we call him Turmeric. And the audience <laughs> laughed. Blew up laughing. I'm talking about Jeff. No, am I lying, Miguel? No, no, you're not lying. I sat there and watched that, and I, I looked at Jari. I said, "What? What's happening?" He goes, "I don't know." And then Jari had to result to, "Hey, when I was up there, and then I came down, I looked at Jari. I said, I don't think I won that one.'" He was like, "Cause there's another dude coming up after me, but I never got a big belly laugh." And and the dude who came up after me, you know, he's a real funny dude too, man. He won. He won. He won the audience. But my God, me and Jari were standing. Jari goes, I got to mean mug the rest of these comics to scare them because we're losing. <laughs> we were terrified. Yeah. We were terrified. The audience, the audience was the, the stuff they were laughing at. You the got stuff they were laughing at blew my mind. It's, no, it's we really won. We, it was West Palm right. Beach, but we won. Right. We ended up actually winning. But that it's, it got to be a do over, Jeff. It was a terrible finals. It was 12 people in a record store. It, like that's that for everything that they put into the Florida versus for it to end that way, it, it, it's it's bad that it ended that way. So I what really the other didn't. the other team did like mostly street jokes or no, no, I mean, they, no were just, they were okay. fun. They were mm -hmm. funny, dude. They were funny. Yeah, it was just it was just uh, no it was, crowd. The no crowd. It was just a bad show all Dude, together. Jari okay. did Jari did one, one of my favorite. Favorite Jari jokes, uh, and I try to blow his spot, but it's, it's, if you know Jari, knows it's hilarious. He's got that joke where he says, I believe in karma, I believe in whatever happens to you is because of if, if bad things happen to you, it's because you bit did bad things. He said, You know, I believe that. He goes, So every time I'm cheating on my girl, I'm thinking, Damn, what did she do to deserve this? <laughs> and all the I comics know. died laughing, like we all knew that joke was hilarious, <laughs> and the audience was like, Huh. Yeah, oh. black, it was a black weird, men oh. don't cheat, Jari. I I I follow the internet. Yeah, yeah. You know? it, it was crazy, bro. It was crazy, but we end up winning. And uh, yeah, nah, Jeff. There was a bar. It was like a strip club and a bar down, like in the same thing in the same shopping center. So I went and sat at the bar, and then I hit Miguel up. I says, "I'm at the bar." He said, "I just lost my round." I said, "Well, come on down." <laughs> yeah, and then I didn't want to leave because I was like, I don't want them to see me leave it after I lost. Like, hey, look at that bitch. Walk out of here. Walk out of here. Yeah, yeah. I don't worry about radio. the That's of them. The You're okay, man. Yeah, yeah it was man. bad. And then we found yeah. out that there's a strip club in that area, too. Yeah. And it's right you know, like next to whole, the bar. Right next to the bar. And then we found out that the bartenders who work at the bar, they also work at the strip club. Because it was it was just kind of like, hey, man, how did everybody here got giant boobs? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, oh, this, we get shifts here, too. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was crazy, man. That but, bar was beautiful, though. It was, was it was nice. They had, was had a, they had a um Food. lady singing, had a lady singing. We sat in the back, like, like comics. I even invited the West Palm dudes. I said, Hey, y'all want to come get a drink? Your first drink on me if y'all yeah. come through. But they were so either either they were salty that they lost or they had somewhere else to be. You yeah, and the mean? funny part was there was home. a dude who That's was two and a half hours, super man. salty. So who was oh, on yeah, the one, West Palm? Yeah. Who who was on the West Palm? I, have, I don't know. No, I don't know the cat. Kelvin McMillan. McMillan is the only one I knew. I didn't know uh, yeah. anybody else. But yeah, one dude was he was angry, Jeff. I'm talking about he I like I told you, I wasn't there. I walked in, he said, Y'all cheated, bro. I said, first of all, I Can wasn't we pay here. off the 12 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. I, I wasn't here. You do well, the owner knows all of you guys. I said, Man, I and at the time I honestly didn't know who the owner was till after the show when he was she was like, he she listens to real laugh. I didn't know the lady. I didn't, I was like, bro. And second of all, yo, we we all got $13 from this gig. 
What you you you, you can have it, bro. <laughs> yeah, we just came out to support Orlando, man. Yeah, we were you just like had to do it. Yeah. Oh, and I want to give a shot. Good. John Loveless is the name of the dude who beat me. Oh yeah, John and he Loveless, was gay, is and he's funny bro. dude. John oh. Loveless is a funny dude. He killed it. You should follow him on social media. John Loveless, if you're listening, you beat me fair and square. Don't show your ass up to Orlando. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, lost your Orlando privileges. Nah, John Loveless beat me. He was he was solid. He was solid, man. Yeah. I just was shocked at the fact that the audience wasn't feeling any of us. Like I mean, none of us. Like is, none of Sean us. Madden. Sean Madden. Sean Madden. Though. Jari that's, knows. That's man, so Sean weird. Madden is a killer too, man. I love Sean Madden, man. Sean, Sean Madden's, Madden's Madden. jokes are brutal, man. Yeah, and the audience was just like, mm-hmm. yeah. But they, then that turmeric came out, and they were like, ah. I said, hey, man. And and and, and she had some up. Uh, she had they had some funny stuff, but like there were a bunch of puns. And I was like, bro, if I lose to a turmeric joke, I'm I quit comedy. I will quit. What are you this? talking about? I'm gonna put that in my routine on on hey, Thursday. Hey, hey, man, I'm gonna open with it, bro. <laughs> we all, everybody should open with it. <laughs> I told every Orlando comic during this competition, I'm like, hey, if you lose your round, you gotta leave your shoes on the stage. You go home without shoes. And then when I lost my round, Patrick sis was like, take them shoes. I said, hush up, boy. That's a, that's a, that's a he lost retirement. his round. Yeah, that's a wrestling retirement. You leave your shoes yeah. in the ring. <laughs> just walk yeah. out. Better not have been the good ones. Hey, <laughs> dude, all right, all right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, man. But it's crazy. Chris, Chris just said wrestling, wrestling retirement. We got Teddy Vermont. Oh, Teddy Vermont is here with us. Oh, um, I, I. This is the thing, man. Me and Chris, we send videos to each other all day. You know, once you start watching a certain video. The algorithm shows you those videos over and over. Yes. And My now lawyer will attest to that. Sometimes it's an accident. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, even when you, if you hold a little bit, they know that you're holding. It's not even that. If you, if you go, what's this? They'll give you twenty. Pornhub Bro. knows when I finished. No, they, they're like, hey, we suggest this for you. But this video is only 90 seconds. Yeah, we know. Yeah. We know, player. <laughs> yeah. Give That's you time you to get up and watch. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, I'm enjoying yeah. the hell out who, of that. Who, 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 who I would be for eight, seven, eight minutes got a problem, B? <laughs> if you, if you don't knock that thing finish. out of 60, bro. You don't no, knock they that really, out of 60 seconds, They really bro, love that video. Issue. That's why. You got an issue, bro. <laughs> they really love that video for eight minutes. That's it. <laughs> and you got an issue. But, but it made me think about this, man. When I watch these videos, it's all wrestling videos now. It, it's mm -hmm. interviews, and, and it's always the Undertaker getting interviewed. And it made me think of this, man. I, I'm asking, I want to know from you guys, what is something that you really, truly missed from your childhood that you don't do anymore? And mine is watch wrestling. I used to love watching wrestling, bro. Love it. And I probably haven't watched wrestling in 20 years, man. I tell you what, what, what of mine is. Just casually bike riding. Just be like, I mean, there was times when I knew my mom was getting home from work and she was like, I like, hey, I only got from 3.30 to 4. And I'm like, let me just go ride around. And not for any other reason than you was just cruising on the yeah. bike, feeling the wind, seeing stuff. I was just telling uh, my mom, I was like, you know what? I've been living downtown. And my, I've lived in my house now for almost seven years. I've been living downtown for close to maybe like 20 years altogether. And there's still streets I don't know. Can you believe that? There's side streets that I, little side streets I've never been on. When we were kids, if you lived, if you stayed somewhere for a summer, you knew every side street, every back alley, yep. every up yep. and down, because yeah. you explore. So every I think for time, me, yeah. I, you know, I'm old and fat. I get it, man. Fat more than old. I'm only old because I'm fat. When you're The fatter you are, the older you are. You know, I'm 42, but super fat, so that's 80. You know, but the truth, <laughs> is, the truth is, man, I wish, you know, I have a bike here, and I used to take it to Publix all the time just to go to Publix and go get my groceries. That was all it was for, you know, because I didn't want to park. And for the past, like, two years, that's been over for me. And I'm like, you know what, man, that's what I miss, just being like, I'll just take the bike. I'll run to the library on the bike. you can't leave that bike in front of Publix anymore. 100%, no, though, that's that's 50% of it. The other 50% is bending over. But... <laughs> <laughs> What about you, Jeff? What's something, man, that you from your you know, childhood that you wish you could still do that you really don't do anymore or, or enjoy? I would say, I would well, say he's going to talk of, to you, Chris Alexander. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, when I think about it, I think about things. I there's something I used to do in my twenties. I used to I used to get like Chick Fil A and smuggle it into a movie theater and eat alone. And I just have yeah. a big Coke and the Chick Fil A, 
and I'd be there solely for the movies. Now I go to the I movies for Jacob. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The movies well, are something I, I now that you now. do as a chore. Yeah. It's not yeah. because and you don't you don't dislike it. That's what, I think that's one of the reasons you like taking us and everybody to the movie theater. Yeah. So they could experience what you felt when you were broke in your twenties, mm-hmm. just hanging out eating Chick-fil-A in the theater. Yeah. I know something about you, Jeff, that I really appreciate. And I think I want the audience to know about it too, is something that matters to you is giving other people fun experiences that makes you happy. And yeah. I've noticed that, man, you know, sharing fun experience. And it's not it's also it doesn't come from a selfish place because there's some people and they don't mean to be, but they want to share the experiences they love. You want to share the experiences that other people love. And that's a big thing. You take people to Taylor Swift. You don't want to go see Taylor Swift. Ooh. But you're like, hey, Jonas I know Brothers. that Jonas, Jonas Brothers, you, Brothers, man. But you'll light up there. Every smiling. song the Jonas Brothers sang was three and a half. They took an intermission that's to get every song in. That's called and taking you, one for the team. Ooh. And yeah, and I, the thing about it is you won't complain. You won't you no. will light up happy because you are still having a good time because you know you were able to do something for your I got friend. a bucket hat. I got a donut Joe Bro <laughs> bucket hat. I had some I had some bracelets. I yeah, mean, I, I gave them all away. We didn't and that's something make. I like we about you too, Jeff. Them. You don't make you don't make the experience suck because you don't like it. You you vibe. Yeah. You can hate the experience, man, but as long as you like the people you're with, you vibe. And I've, I've noticed yeah, you that. Want, you want to ruin it for people. You want to. You want everyone to be happy, man. Yeah, yeah. I try to tell yeah. the ladies that when we're doing it, I'm like, chill out, man. I'm having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, hey, Chris, we got like two minutes, man. What's something that you missed as a kid that you don't do anymore when, as you're older? Surprisingly, walking. Like mm-hmm. when you used to go to your when you used to walk to your no not that <laughs> when you walk into your friend's house like he like lived like two yeah. houses down or like I'm gonna walk to the store and yeah. walk back just go like yeah, back when I used to live in Oklahoma I I walked the entire uh, there was a small town called Watonga I used to walk from one end to the other just <laughs> walk- <laughs> not Wakanda Watonga <laughs> it's yeah. just how it's pronounced I know is it cold are you freezing. <laughs> I never freeze. Yeah. But no, like <laughs> being in Orlando, like especially like older and out of shape and this and so forth. Like every like kids 15 minutes away from my house. I'm not walking 15. <laughs> yeah, but if you're if you're 12 or 13, you would walk. Oh, I would yeah, literally exactly. walk to the house. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that being said, we got to get up out of here. Before we go, man, don't forget, guys, if you ain't doing nothing, this Thursday, all for the money comedy show, September 12th at the corner. Um, (laughs) Make sure you come check us out. Um, Ali Flores also will be on the show. Jeff, what's the website? It's uh, whenyouneedus.com slash events. So make sure you check that out. Then this Saturday. It's free. This Saturday, I will be at the fifth year anniversary of Curtis Bateman's um, Straight Foolishness show. Hoping to get nice. Curtis Bateman on um, this week so we can get to promote the show. Um, Jeff, where you at this weekend, bro? Uh, I'll be doing Under Oath. We have, a, we have a good show coming up. James and I do Under Oath. And uh, I'm just getting back from uh, Disneyland uh, tomorrow. So it'll be good. Get back, in the, get back into things. Nice, nice. Miguel, what you got going on this weekend, brother? Uh, besides All for the Money on uh, Thursday, which has the worst poster of our career since we've done it. David, I'm talking to you. Turning me into Bart Simpson. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be over at Champions Gate doing a show for Brick Sterner. Uh, it's going to be a good show. It's me and Sean Madden at Champions Gate. Show starts, I think, nice. at 8 o'clock. It's going to be fun. All right, Chris. And I know Chris got karaoke night every Tuesday at V Pizza. Karaoke night, 8586 Palm Park, where Orlando show starts at 7 p.m. It's free and all ages. Chris, what you got yeah. going on this weekend? Uh, Just another private DJ gig I got. So that's pretty much it. Good for you, man. Well, we got to get up out of here, man. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Chris Alexander, Miguel Colon Jr. from the Law Office of Kaufman and Lynn, and the Under O Podcast, Mr. Jeff Batman Kaufman. Jeff, tell him what to do. Take your ass to bed. Good night.